How you doing? I'm JD and welcome to my channel. If you want my service, just email me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com. So let's get on with it. I've actually just finished reassembling this Eaton pocket watch, this T Eaton pocket watch. Um, and it's a beautiful Manitoba pocket watch uh, put together by a jeweler and it's got a uh, nice watch movement in there that's a Swiss watch movement. So I had a little bit of, a few troubles here and there, but you can watch it. It's a full full movie this time man i don't think my wife's gonna watch it hey welcome back to my videos i'm jd if you want to get a hold of me contact me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com that's jdwatchservice at gmail.com so i'm working on the very nice little eaton there's a little e e the eaton pocket watch and i decided to <clears throat> use my bergeron 6240 to just scrape around the rim of this watch of the uh, case um, just to get any gunk out of where the uh, where the threads are around the rim because I noticed it was a little bit difficult to uh, to take off the face so I thought I'd uh, spend a little time spend a little bit of time with this fiberglass pen here and just go around the case like this a little bit of watch paper on the bottom to collect crap that falls down. And uh, this will get rid of anything that's there that's causing this to block up or whatever. I was going to put it in the micro, in the uh, ultrasonic, I was going to say microwave. Yeah, right. In the ultrasonic cleaner <coughs> and, um, and clean it that way. But I was a bit concerned about the uh, liquid getting in there and stuff. So I decided to just do this by hand. Sometimes by hand is not that bad. You can see all the crud collecting on the bottom there. Holy crap, Batman. That's a lot of crud. And I want to make sure I get 99% of it here. Or at least 78%. And there we go. Around the corner. Now the threads look a lot better. And the inside's fine the way it is, I believe. I'll go in deep on this and just make sure there's nothing in there that's uh, shouldn't be in there. Yeah, no, it looks pretty good on the inside. And I want to take a cloth here, and I will use um, this old cloth. I still have leftover peak on here, which is actually pretty good for. Uh, for getting rid of gunk. It's uh, good for shining and getting rid of gunk. Peak is great. You can get peak at your local uh, hardware store. And if you look at that, look at the shine that that peak puts on this watch. And that's just leftover peak. I didn't even have to put any new peak on there. And it's a, it's an amazing uh, polisher. It's And it's made for polishing. So it's not like there's some unique thing that it does. It's, it is made for polishing. <clears throat> so if you just go around the rim here and polish it with this leftover peak, it comes out rather nice. I'm trying to do that there and then if you look at that, look at the end there like that and then you just peak it a bit. Just find a, a spot where I can rub this. Now look at it. Holy crap, that's good. Of course, your hands get all dirty doing this, but it's part of the business, man. Part of the business. The business. Yeah. The back, case back was fine on this. Let me just move this over here. I'm going to get rid of this piece of watch paper and hope it doesn't fling up because it's full of, it's full of fiberglass. So there's the back of the watch. So if you look at that back of the watch, and this is just leftover peak, this isn't this isn't new peak. And I just do this on it. And you can see that polishing up nicely. Now I could put a little blob of peak on there maybe, but it's ruining my mat, but I'll have to change my mat again anyway, so it's getting a little bit dirty. 
and then the back of it it's not going to take off much gold this peak isn't anyway but I'm going to leave it rather vintage but I'm going to polish it up in the back and you'll see the difference here of what it looks like once it's got a nice polish on it holy crap it's really nice I don't really need to take this downstairs to my buffing machine because I actually don't want to take off any gold and I want to make it look as vintage as possible so so there you go so look at that look at the difference there eh? it's amazing and I'll do the same with the bezel once I get the bezel back on so that's a little bit of polishing and then I just wipe my mat clean Every time I use this stuff, I end up blackening my mat, but after a while you need to replace it anyway. Otherwise, people comment on your mat. Now let's have a little boo at the parts here and see what they look like after this intense cleaning. Let me just turn my camera over a little bit and get a better view of all this stuff. Uh, let me see. i got holes in my desk. What's that, what's that all about? <laughs> Those are holes for mounting a watch lathe. Back when I was using my watch lathe without the Burrell stand, I used to just, there's, ended up with holes. Anyway, I'm going to take the top off of this and then grab it like that. And I'm going to dump this stuff. So if you do it right away, then your memory's kicking in and you, so you remember what the heck you did. So just put the gears off on the side. Yeah, that's it. It should be nice and clean now. This one did stay with the pivot facing upward, which is nice. And then there's the escapement right there. And I'm going to be very careful pulling this up. I don't want it to get caught on the screen and then me to bend it. That wouldn't be a good thing. There we go. That's the escapement. And then remember I put this little, this little thingamajabby doohickey from the setting mechanisms in the center with its baby screw. And there's the baby screw, if you recall that. Yeah, just show the camera and then lose the screw. So there we go. And then there's the three screws here. And these came from the, uh, the main plate. I think this smaller one that I grabbed was probably from the very end of the main plate. So that's the, the center wheel one. So this screw here was the one that was uh, part of the center wheel. So I don't think that's, uh, I think that's why it's slightly smaller than the rest of them. And now I grab the uh, this here basket like that, and I use my screwdrivers to open these up. But first I'll grab this stuff here. So I got this here wheel, which is a, what is that? A crown wheel? I remember the names of these wheels. And I got its screw, which is a reverse thread. And then I've got this, which goes in the center of that wheel, like that. And I've got these two screws here that are both part of, no, that's not part of that. This is part of that. So I've got these two screws here, right there, and they're part of this here. Yeah, there's the two screws for this component. And then I got the one screw for this component. There we go. So I've matched up the screws there, making me very, very happy. I'm going to move my camera up a little bit or down a little bit. I can't remember which. <clears throat> there we go. So take this basket out and open it up. And then I can dump these parts and have a look at what I got. Make sure I dump them all. And I've got my cannon pinion right there. I've got the two screws for the other plate. And remember, there's one missing. And then I've got this uh, wheel, and this is the one that's beveled, I believe. Yeah, it's beveled, so it's got to go down on top of the uh, that wheel. And then I've got the screw for it, which is super small. Wow, I didn't know it was that small. But I think there's a pipe on it on the top, so that's why it's so small. So I've got that, and then, oop, put that back. And then I've got, this is like... My wife said, you got to come down for lunch and eat the chicken. Because if I don't eat the chicken, she says, you're going to have to throw it away. And I don't like throwing away chicken. <clears throat> it's not good. 
there's people starving in the world you shouldn't be throwing anything away period so there's the stem and there's this little jobby doohickey there with its appropriate screw and then there's another part of the stem there and there's the I'll put that hour wheel there and then this goes here and then there's the minute wheel there and then there's this wheel here which is also part of the stem that goes in there or the motion works as they call it right so so I'm grouping the parts and I'm gonna go have lunch after I finish this so this is let's see if I've got all of that yep it's all of it all of it why don't they all of it I can't sing today my voice is higher than normal there's the balance bridge and or the pallet fork bridge actually and there's the two screws that hold that in and there we go and there's the, the ratchet for the main spring and there's the one screw that holds that in so that's done now I can throw all this back because I've got nothing left in there and uh, <clears throat> I put a ring wireless camera um, I put a ring wireless camera uh, pointing at my wash machine at my watch watchmaker's washing machine my pearl wash machine and it worked brilliantly so I just opened my iPhone up I started up and I don't want to leave it alone because I'm worried about it blowing up um, so I started up and then I uh, and then I look at what's going on and it seemed to be perfect so here's the plates and see how well they came out it's not bad at all look at that spanky clean spanky clean I'm gonna move the plates over here there's another plate here with the jewels and that's also clean as hell so man that's nice I'll have a look at these jewels but they look really nice from uh, the first glance um, there's the mainspring barrel remember how dirty that was clean if I put my finger in there is that moving anything no that's just clean as a whistle there, there's the whistle it was clean of. And there's the arbor. And there's the, I can't remember whether this mainspring was left-handed or right-handed. I don't think I took a picture of it. Now, do you remember how much gunk was on this? Um, look at that. This washing machine does an excellent job. Look at that. Now, I did put it in for quite a while. So I'd had about, probably about 15 minutes in the wash cycle. And uh, I'll check all the jewels here too see if there's any issues with these jewels but it looks very very clean so so that's that um, I'll have to put the mainspring barrel in I gotta remember see whether that's which direction it goes so I think one way of doing it is you put the arbor in so I think that the the barrel goes in like this the arbor goes in like there's a fat end and a thin end so the arbor goes in like this because it's the only way it can go in like that and then the hook for the barrel is or the hook for the mainspring is right right there well, there's the hook there it's a nice hook actually and if the hook works it's it's pulling this way which means it's pulling this way to tighten it right which means this thing is clockwise so that means this watch the mainspring is clockwise so I put that in and I can tell right away that it's pulling it that way so which means so it's clockwise going in I'll leave it laid down like that which means I can use my brand new mainspring winders to uh, to wind that in because they're clockwise mainspring winders and not counterclockwise mainspring winders and I didn't know because I have an old vintage mainspring winder but I didn't know that they had a left and right hand so this this one is a cl clockwise I'll say right hand mainspring winder and there's my baskets all back together again and put that in and I will start working on reassembling this watch I still have to do work on here the balance so but I can get all of it reassembled and then put the balance in and then deal with other things. 
All right, I got my spring winder set here, so I got to figure out what the barrel size is. And I think these are right-handed spring winders as opposed to left, so they only work with right hand. And then I remember I tried to take this out last time and it slipped 15 times. So there it is there. So now I have to find the right barrel size. So I just grab the uh, spring, grab this, and then look for the barrel size here. Is that the right barrel size? Oh, I think I got the right barrel size for shot. It's pretty good. I'll go up one just to make sure to this one here. Because this might be... Let's put it over here so I don't confuse everything. Not too big. So that's perfect. So that was the right barrel size right there. Put that back. That's a 12. And this is an 11. So there you go. Let me get this out of the way. It's a beautiful little set here that I got from a very nice gentleman. And uh, it's Bergeron, which is good quality, right? So put this in. I don't have much experience using this type of spring winder, by the way. So put this in here and then crank it a bit, right? And I know I want to wind this thing. It has to go clockwise. And I can see that the little knobby on the thing should grab it and turn it clockwise. So it goes clockwise into the barrel. This would go, the barrel, where's my barrel? My barrel's like that. This is a clockwise, so then it goes like this into here, which means it's going to go, let me see if I can find the groove here. There it is there. Which means this is gonna go in like this and then turn this way. So, but I think this one's gonna have the same problem the other one had, because I think the spring is not really hugging the arbor, right? So I gotta modify this just ever so slightly to get this to hug the arbor. Now, I'm not sure how whether I how much I need to bend it, right? Because if you bend it too much, you end up with other problems. So if I bend it in like that, just a bit, like so, is that gonna allow me to grab that? Let me see. Sorta. So that was like this. Let me let me let me make sure I get the right direction again. So you grab this down here, and you say that's clockwise in the barrel, which means it's going to be pushed in this way, which means it goes like this, right? And which means I'm finding the groove here again. So it's like that, which means this little thingamajobby doohickey has to go in like this, like that, and I'll find the crack here and wind it in. So it's got to catch though. So if it doesn't catch, then it ain't going to wind. So let me see if I can squeeze this a little more. So you can see that right there, right? The way that is. And it's just not catching, which means I have to kind of squeeze it just a bit more. So I'm just going to take this here like this and squeeze it in. And I know it's going to make it a little more challenging when I put the arbor in, but just squeeze that down just a bit more see if that catches that could catch I'm not saying should I'm saying could yeah so that'll go in like that clockwise I'm gonna put this in like this and then hopefully I can it'll find home here like this and then is that going in nope still not catching that hook damn it needs to catch that hook. It's turning now. I think it's just turning because it's turning. I don't think it's catching the hook yet. So now I gotta move it just a little bit more in. Just a bit more to catch that hook. That's the world's smallest hook on this thing though. So I may end up having to go to a different uh, spring winder because this one here is a super small hook. And I don't want to break this particular spring by curling it in too much. See what that looks like. Now it's still a little bit uh, off. So spread my pliers a bit and then or my tweezers and just squeeze down on it a bit. All right, that moved it there significantly. So 
which now it'll hug the hook no problem and again that's going to go into the barrel this way so if this is on the hook then I'm good I'm not off the hook so it's not necessarily on the jobby do hooky here but if I turn that around and there we go so now it's getting hooked I believe so it's getting hooked and it's going into the barrel and I'm down near the end here and this has got a little T thing happening here so I can just push this and it'll slide it in the rest of the way and then I gotta loosen this up like that and you gotta make it go backwards a bit and now it's in the uh, the winder hopefully you saw that it wasn't too far out of camera and now all I need to do is this has got a little edge on it I can see that little edge right there and let me flip my glasses down and have a look here yeah that's where that edge is so that goes on the other side of that edge but it's going to catch it anyway so I'm not too concerned so that goes in like that like so and hopefully I've got that all the way in and now I'm going to just push this into the barrel like that and there we go now it's in the barrel and I want to set the arbor in and now that I've squeezed it considerably the arbor should fit in without a problem so that's the arbor and the fat end goes in on the arbor so you gotta take it like this it's funny how when you undo it it just sort of widens out so there's the arbor and I just that's where I gotta fit it in now so what I usually do is I find the hole on the bottom part and I use a screwdriver to convince it in <clears throat> so I got to convince it in with a screwdriver and I'm sure if I can show this but sometimes it's a little bit too wide so I got to go find the hole in the bottom so I got the hole in the bottom right now and it's got to go over a bit more and check the bottom and just use your fingernail or something to nudge it over so it's finding the hole properly just sort of like that and that's kind of in like there and I just need to use a screwdriver on the other side to get in here and then play the old widen the, widen the spring game I like to call it widen the spring all right it's good on that side I grow on this side here and now I'm going to widen it just put the screwdriver in here like this and then get this above that and you see that that's sort of almost in right now and I'm looking at the bottom and there we go now it's in and now it's in but the spring is not around the catch on it so you can take your tweezers like this and then grab the square part of these of the mainspring right here like that put a little bit of pressure on that square part and then rotate this and with any luck uh, make sure you keep it inside of where it needs to be and then there we go I think that hook is in now and it should be fine and just to make sure I'm going to take my tweezers and push down on this a bit think that's hooked in all right so that's not too bad now I gotta put a little bit of oil on that because I I always do so I think you should put just a little bit of oil on the top remember how dirty this was when I got it oh my god it was terrible so I'm gonna take uh, this I'm gonna grab a little bit of oil where's my oiler where's my oiler um it's somewhere oh yeah there it is it is over here so a lot of stuff on it so there we go and grab an oiler here my favorite oiler and the oil I'm putting on here is is Mobius 9104 so it's this stuff right here 9104 it's got an expiry date but I'm not sure if that's good it's a 2020 but I think it's crap because either all synthetic oils so 
think uh, the old whale oils, I think, would expi expire, but not these. Whale oil beef hooked. Whale oil beef hooked. I think that was a joke I learned years ago. Just put a little oil on there. Now, you remember when I opened this up, how much oil it had on it? Holy crap. It's like it was from Texas or something. And I also put a little tiny bit of oil around the arbor here because it's going to be rubbing against the barrel. And that'll just spread around nicely, no problem. And then stick my oiler inside my oil. I love these oilers, by the way. These are great. They're Bergeron as well. I can't remember where I picked them up, but I love them. So, so now I can put the cap on, and all I need to do is line up. This has got this. I don't have to really have to worry about where to put this on because there's no groove I have to line it up with. But I'll make sure that it this groove here is the opposite to where the hook is hooking, right? So, and then I'm just praying that this thing hooks the spring well, and I don't have any issues there. So you just put that down like this, put this on like that, and then push down to find home like that and sometimes you can just push the cap on like I just did but every time I push a cap on like that I always back it up by dropping my tweezers on my lap I back it up by pushing it down like this as well just to make sure it's absolutely flat you're not in any way near the gears so you don't have to worry about hurting the gears the teeth is what I'm talking about the uh, teeth on the mainspring barrel so there we go so that's Good as gold and then I look at it from the edge to make sure there's nothing sticking up because anything sticking up will interfere with its working okay so that's good um, and then I think I just clear off a couple of prints here on it and if I've left any prints or anything I just clear that off and it'll be in good standing now hopefully this will work and I won't have to take it apart and bend that spring anymore because that's, that's a slight possibility when you put a spring in like that and it gets has to get adjusted so I just a little bit of Rodico and that just cleans that up nicely and I just get rid of the fingerprints and then roll the barrel I got I know I've got my fingers in there but that doesn't matter too much I think with this so <clears throat> there we go so that barrel's ready to rock and roll um, before I do any of the reassembly of this I want to put all the spring stuff back. So this is going to be tough. I'm going to have to get my phone out. Because I won't be able to put that back without looking at the picture through my phone. Alright, I just realized that I wasn't filming this whole time. So what I did was I put this part here in. Right? And that went in nice and easy. And I screwed that down. And then I threw this part down and realized it had to be on this wheel here. On the inside, I didn't. I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. I'm glad I realized that. And now I put the screw in here, and I got to tighten it to make sure it's nice and tight and doesn't go anywhere. But this thing still has to move. Yeah, there we go. And I think this, this here actually goes up a bit because because it seems like it catches right here. Right there is where it catches, like that. Now. I actually have to put the spring on. So I'm going to move this up and down a bit for a bit better of an angle. There we go. And I have to put this spring in now. So here's the spring. The spring is sprung. And it's got to go on the other side of the jobby do hickey. So it goes on the other side of, of this bar here. And then over like that. So it just sits like this. Now, we'll see if all this stuff works once I get it all in place. And when I push stuff, things go in the right order. So i got two screws i got to put in here. Screw number one, like that. And then I'll put in screw number two after. I'll just put my this piece down so this doesn't fly around. I'll tighten those down after. So i just put them in like that for now. Not even tight, just a bit, just sitting there. So, so I moved my microphone above my head. So now you get sort of better audio. I don't have to, I had shitty audio before and I kept having to increase the audio um, on when I produced the film. 
Okay, this is moving around on me here. Stop it. It's not naturally fitting in here. So I might be able to use a toothpick as a brace to line this thing up. I'm not sure, but it's not naturally fitting in. I'm going to go to smaller tweezers, see if that helps at all. Holy shit, folks. This is like a pain in the butt. All right, now I'm going to try another technique. I'm going to actually hold the screw with the tweezers while I turn it. I'm getting super desperate here. I'm getting pissed off at this effing screw here. It doesn't want to go in properly. It's at an angle right now. Get your butt in there. I don't want to strip it, so patience is a virtue. Holy shit, folks, this is like stupid as hell. Let me just look and see if there's a problem here. Like, is the spring pushing against the screw, causing the screw to move? So I may have to get my thumb in there, get the spring out of the way. Yeah, that's what it was. It was a spring pushing against the screw, so I had to move this spring over a bit, just to just to allow that screw to go in. So. But that's not tight yet, so I'm gonna tighten this up. So I'm just having a look at where it's touching here. So that looks all that all looks good. So I don't know whether it'll work or not, but it looks good. It looks good. Um, this screw is going pretty deep, so I'm wondering if I mix these two up. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm going to look at the picture of these screws to make sure that those screws are still are in the right order. I don't know, they both look like they're a bit deep, so I'm not sure whether I have an issue here or not. Let me... Yeah, they both look like they're going in deep, but when I'm looking at them right now, one of them's going in deep and the other one isn't. So this is not probably uh, another watchmaker would probably just do it like this, but I ain't another watchmaker, so I'm taking the screw back out again. And I'm going to flip it for the other one. And I'm going to put pressure on this little thing here. Put some pressure on the spring here while I'm doing that. And then move this out of the way. And I'm going to make this one on the other side. So what I'm going to do is loosen this screw up now. And then, because I know I got the right screws. But if the depth is wrong, that's a different thing, right? So, so I'm going to take this screw here and I'm going to put it over here. And then see if the depth is right on this one. Here we go, I'm effing around with this stupid hole again. Holy shit, man. I know why Bun gets pissed off now. Good old Bun special. So I put this part way in. Let me just unscrew it a bit more. Because it's going to... The spring is moves over, which makes the, screws, the screw hole non-accessible. And I'm checking down here to make sure I've still got that spring resting on this little knobby here. 
which I do. So this is going to be a long video. And uh, I'm not going to speed this one up. I'm just going to keep going. When you're watching this on YouTube, you can appreciate the amount of the pain in the ass this can be, right? Holy shit, man. I wish I could swear more and use the F word and shit. So every time I say frack, you know what I'm saying? Because this fracking screw is in fracking ways. Fracking pissing me fracking off. Frack sakes. That's why I don't like taking these springs out. Once they're in, they're in. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I got that one down in the right depth. And now I'm going to screw this one in, but again, i got to put my finger in here and move that over just a bit. So it takes the tension off the spring. See, now I cut my stupid fingernails, and now I can't get them in there to help. Don't strip the screw, buddy. All right, so that looks a lot better. They're, they're at pretty much the same depth now. So those screws were different. So go go figure they'd make these two screws different, right? Go friggin' figure, right? So now I've got that's done, right? And now I've got to put in this wheel. So this is the wheel here. I should clean the shellac off of these. So this is the wheel here, and if you can see, it's just sort of... I called it... What did I call it before? It's sort of angled down. Each, each of the tooth has got a bevel on it. So there's a bevel on the tooth. The bevel goes downward, right? Because it's going to go mesh with this gear here. So I'm going to put this in here. And I can see the smallest hair on that. So I'm going to pick that up with Ronico in a second. Just like that, right? There we go. And is that hair still there? There we go, just clean that up a bit with Rodico. Now you see how that turns the whole gear? It's like that. And then it's got a big, a big friggin' uh, I'm not sure if I should oil that or not. I don't think I will actually. Well, maybe I will. Put a little bit of oil on that before I put the screw down. So, let me just get a little tiny bit of oil here. Like I've said before, when you're oiling stuff on these watches, you um, just put some oil in the various places I need to put oil. Right in there. And I'll oil the rest later. Try to put oil in all the friction points, um, but not a lot. If you put a lot of oil in it, then it's going to get messy. Now, do you remember before I cleaned the watch, the stuff that was there, the gump? So that's all gone. And there was a lot of gunk in that watch before. So I putting that through the cleaning machine, cleaning all that crap up. Now if I didn't have a picture of this to put to assemble this back up, I would be screwed. And it's actually funny how they have this world's biggest screw on top of this gear here. And I know I don't have the right screwdriver, but I'll try this one anyway. I tighten that down and just make sure it moves. And grab a bigger screwdriver here. Loosen it and then tighten it. Here we go. That's good. It's moving and it's meshing with that gear. So that's that. And now I'm going to grab this, this here and make sure that's in the right direction here. That goes like so. I'm just going to switch tweezers here. This goes like this, but i got to put the gear down first. So I got myself um, the minute wheel that needs to go in. So this goes in like that. And the minute wheel post. I should put a little bit of oil on that post. There we go. Minute wheel post. And I'm gonna while I got the oiler out, I'm gonna put a little oil in the center wheel here. Just a bit. There we go. I'll spread that around. And I still have to take the cap jewel off of that cap jewel and do work on that, but I really wanted to get this crap together because it's the harder stuff to get together. It's 
a Beatles song, I think. Come together right now. Over you. Doo -doo. That's meshing nicely with that. And then this goes in here, like this. Over the top, like so. And then the swirl's longest screw goes on top of that. So I don't think that'll just roll in. I think I have to pick that screw up and put it in the old way. I need to get my other screwdriver or just or just revise get get the um, clean out the tip of that screw. So putting this screw is gonna be a two screwdriver job, I know it. So it's because that's not gonna I'm not gonna be able to I gotta hold that while I'm screwing it in. I know it. Because it's so long. So I'm lucky. Come on, lucky. Oh, look at that, I'm lucky. I think that goes in just hard over, so I don't think it's supposed to move once it goes in. So I'm going to just center it like that and then tighten it. There we go. That, that's moving there, that's moving there. Yeah, that goes in like that and presses against that screw. So now everything, I believe, is in. So if I take a, uh, take a bench key, my favorite bench key, trying to find out where my bench keys are. And I just stick it in the end here, get rid of the Rodico. That's no, basically no use right now. And I uh, stick this bench key in the end. Fat end first. There we go. Now if it's like this, then it's winding the, uh, or it's setting the time. And when it's like this, like that, which in is, is in its normal position, right yeah then it's and scraping here and here and here so I'm gonna take my oiler and I'm gonna get some oil in there because I think I'm gonna get thicker oil in there because this is pretty friggin scrapey so what I'm gonna do is put this put the movement put the bench key in push up and I can see where the scraping is happening right here and that's oh that's a lot nicer and it's also happening right here. Just like that. And when I flip it around, I'll put some more oil on here. So that works well. But look at that. So that's nice and smooth. That is super smooth there. So that's perfect. And a little bit of oil on the gears here. I, I'm a preponderant. Is that right word? Preponderant of having oil on these gears here? On the teeth? So just put a little tiny bit and when I spin that around, it's going to touch the other teeth. So, and it just, steel on steel, you want the least amount of friction as possible, right? But you also don't want the oil to ride around. So, so I'm just putting a little bit of oil on here. And then on the shaft on the inside. Like that. I think that's nice right there. Alright, that's near perfect I'd say. So let me just shut that down. I don't need my I don't need any pictures anymore. And now I got my watches in pretty darn good condition. Uh, but now I want to I want to clean that capsule before I turn stuff around and work on that. So can I get the cap to screws out with screws out with this here screwdriver? Probably. And what I do again is I just put a little pressure on it to try all the uh, the tension, and then I unscrew it. So again, move the screws out of the way so they don't become part of your arm. And I want to make sure I put this back in the exact same position. So I'm going to score this, and this will be the the uh, the watch the part of the watch where the uh, face is anyway so you want to just put a little score mark on it like that and line that up with the plate see that little mark there so just put a little mark on that and this is a watchmaker twist and it's a witness mark and you want to make sure that witness mark is there so when you put this stuff back together it's going back together exactly the same way you took it apart so the screw is slipping out of my screwdriver stop it 
think it's because it's out. There we go. And I put those left and right over here, uh, just so they uh, they are out of the way. Now, I'm not sure if this will just come out because I can just grab a piece of Rodico here and then lift that up. So I know there's a lot of people out there that watch my videos and they appreciate they appreciate the uh, the work I put into them. And I'm not trying not to lecture, but uh, I do work hard on these movements and videos, and associated videos. So, so what I'm looking at here is, I think I'm looking at the end of, yeah, the pivot actually goes right through there. So, and the capsule is, the capsule is right there on the other side. And so I'm going to clean that capsule off. I think I might throw that into a little bit of uh, lighter fluid, actually. So, but I want to do some basic cleaning on that inside jewel here just a bit. This likely has never been cleaned before. Yeah, I'm going to peg this out. Yeah, that pegged down, right? And then smush down a little bit of... Um, a little bit of Rodico on there to clean the end of it. That should be nice right there. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. Um, let me see if I can clean this by hand, this other jewel here. Because I did it before and it's it actually comes out really nice. So what I do is just take this, you can see me in the background here, and I just rub the uh, peg wood around there. Get rid of any residual dirt that's in the holes there. And then I want to hold hold this with my tweezers. Hold it down with my tweezers as I scrape the face with it. Um, like so. Hand cleaned. Now if I look at that, it should be pretty friggin' clean. Oh yeah. So let me see if I can show you the, the glaze in the camera here. There you go. That's it there. Now you see how clean that is? That's like brilliantly clean. And now I want to see where my witness mark is. So my witness mark is on the other side. So if I grab this like this, this will go down like that. Turn it over like this. It's still brilliantly clean. I look for the reflection again, like I'm saying. And I put a little bit of oil right on that capsule. As they say in watchmaking, the perfect amount of oil you want to put on there. So that is the perfect amount of oil. I might show a close up of that too if it's possible. There you can just see the little oil on the top. So that's the oil. And now when I turn this around, I got the witness mark here. So I line this up so the witness mark is completely lined up. Let me get my toothpick or something out here. Uh, toothpick. And so that's completely lined up. So when I put this, place this down, I know that's in perfect position to accept the jewels or the screws. And remember when I took these screws out, I took this screw out of this side. I just heard my wife sneeze two seconds ago. And I'm going to screw that down before I continue with the other one, but not tighten it. There we go. That's in place, but not tightened. And then I take this screw here. Play by play, man. Play by play. 
I wish I could tell you a story while I'm doing this, right? A story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. Oh my God, Jed. You mean to keep your family fed, okay? Babble, babble, babble. This is a Sunday. There we go. I had to hold my breath while I was screwing that in because I can't talk while I'm doing that because I will, pardon the pun, screw it. And tighten that one too. There we go. You got to make sure your screwdriver, when you're doing these little screws in here, doesn't slip sideways. And if you put too much pressure on that and it slips sideways, it could crack your capsule. And you don't want that. That'll be that would be what you call a bad day. So that's done. So that's done on that side. That's the hardest part. I believe it is. And while I'm over on this side here, I'm going to apply a little tiny bit of oil to the um, to this movement here. So, and just to keep it nice and fresh. So this is a, I believe this is D5 oil. And this oil is for Specifically used. Um, there, so we'll keep that nice and fresh, and throw a little bit on the teeth here, and then a little tiny bit around the shaft here. So when this turns around, it's going to basically share that oil right with the rest of the watch. So, and I'll turn that around right now, so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. Just share that with the rest of the watch. That's nice and smooth, man. That's super smooth. All right, so that's good. That's done. And now I can start reassembling the uh, gears on the top. Um, now the question is, now that I've got everything kind of out of the way, I should probably put my pallet fork in first because I usually wait, but then the pallet fork, putting the pallet fork in is a pain sometimes if you wait too long. So if I clean the pallet fork up a bit, the surfaces are super shiny on this thing, so I don't think it needs much cleaning. So I'm just going to dab it in the radical in this end. And the other end looks spunky clean as well. So, But I'm going to make sure that I take some pithwood and just sink it into the pithwood ever so carefully here. All right, so now I got dots like that. And now I got to put the part pallet fork in, but I got to make sure the guard pin is in the right side. So the roller table would be on the top, so the guard pin would be on the other side. So if the roller table is, let me think here, the impulse jewel hits in the roller table, so the guard pin would have to be on the top. So it will go in like this with the guard pin on the top, like that. I think it goes in like this. Actually, that don't think that makes any sense. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. That's got to go in the other way. That's got to go guard pin on the bottom. I should take a look at one of my pictures just to make sure I'm right here. Yeah, I was logically illogicalizing myself. The guard pin goes in the bottom, you idiot. I know that. I don't know why I question myself here. So let's just put this pallet fork in like this. I always feel like with this lens I have that I'm too close. Because uh, too close or too far, one or the other. So, so here's the, uh, the bridge for the pallet fork. So this is always a fun action here. So we put the bridge in. And this just goes in, there's some guide knobby jobbies for the bridge, so this goes in like that. Just drop this down here and see if I can find home with it. That's kind of home there. So that's not in right because I gotta make sure that that 
I don't want to press too hard because I want to make sure that the pallet fork is ex being accepted by the jewel hole. So. seems to be so difficult today. Doesn't want to go in. Come on, get your arse in the hole. Get your arse in the hole. This is usually where I turn the video off and say, okay, let's start this again. Let me pull this out and say, okay. Usually when you just drop it in, it works. So, but I don't want to crack anything here. So, it's going to be very, very careful. All right. So that's one side there. And now I'm going to. Uh, this is going to be a long video because I'm showing everything here. And. These are not the easiest to put together sometimes. Put back together, I guess. So, especially this part here. So I'm glad I, I'm doing it without all the other gears in there. Because I often just do it with the gears in place and uh, see what happens. I think I'll just put the back screw in here very lightly so at least I have a screw in place and this thing doesn't fly out. Like that and just put that screw in very lightly so I got myself uh, at least the semblance of something that's in place. Make sure that's tight so things don't fly around. And I know I think Bun's probably going to watch this video and go, what the hell is this JD guy up to? Is there not an easier way of doing this? That's my question. So that's in place there, but it's loose. I don't want to crush this pallet fork here. Holy shit, now it's way off to the side. I mean, they're going to turn the video off and fart with this until I get it in so you guys don't lose faith in me. So I don't get angry about much in watchmaking, but putting that effing pallet fork in, oh my god, what a shitty design this is. So whoever engineered this whole arrangement with the pallet fork, frigged up. I'm keeping it clean here, folks, but it frigged up with a U in there because... Uh, I put this in and I think I'm good now, but holy shit, that was hard. So what I did was I lifted this up out. I picked it up right here. I put it in an angle and I found the hole for the, for the pivot before I laid this thing down. So I came in flat, found the hole and laid it down because my normal method of just dropping it in and then farting with the, uh, the uh, fork for a second usually works. Eh? So, but this did not work at all. So if I had to do that, I, I checked and the pivots are there on both sides, so I'm good. So this thing is down and good, and if I touch the fork here, it's nice and loose. So, so it's not, the pivots aren't being squeezed or anything, but this was a pain in the ass, okay. 
I'm telling you right now. Holy shit, that was painful. Holy Jesus. And I'm going to put a little bit of uh, oil on the top of that pallet fork because I think it needs it right there. There's a little, little reservoir for oil too. So a little bit of or reservoir. So that pallet fork is now in and tight. That's going to move freely back and forth, no problem. That's good. So that's good. That's in. And that's done and dusted. And I'm just going to poke this here for a second in case I left any leftover smudges in here. Now before I assemble everything, I'm going to take my Mobius oil here. My 9415, I'm going to put that on the pallet fork because I'm always waiting till the last minute and then I'm putting it on in a difficult way after the fact. So I'm just going to take this oil here, it's Mobius, and just put this on both of the jewels of the pallet fork. Those jewels, the jewels, the jewels of the Nile. There, so I'm taking that oil that I just showed you and I'm going to one on one side and one on the other side. There, that's absolutely perfect. And that oil just compresses and decompresses, but it keeps the, uh, the feet of the escapement slide through that nicely. So that's perfect. And I'm just going to throw the barrel in so in case I forget. So throw the barrel in like this. I oiled that already, as you remember, as you recall. So the barrel, just throw that in like that. That's good. And now I've got to figure out which wheels go where. So usually the escapement goes in next. So I'm going to kind of back everything off a bit because I'm getting way too close to my work, right? So I'll just do it right there. Okay. And my parts are over here, so my hand is kind of in the way. So I'm just going to move all this shit out of the way here. And get some of these wheels here. So this is the escapement. And usually that goes face down. So, and that's going to be... It's going to be right here. And I'm going to get in deep and dirty here to get this in nicely. For some reason, I think I'm way too close. All right, so that's the escapement in place. Um, I'm going to tap the pivot on the end of this escapement here, too. Like that. So that's the escapement, and then I have the fourth wheel to put in next. And that fourth wheel um, is likely to go in like this because the face is on the other side. So the fourth wheel will go right down through the center. Like so. Like this. Now I gotta make sure that I got the order of the wheels in the right order here. So fourth wheel, now that's pretty good. That goes in like that. And then the intermediate wheel here goes in. I think it goes gear up, like so. Like that. So it goes in like that. And then the center wheel goes long stem down. Or does it? Actually, it's the face is on the other side, so yeah, it does. So it goes in like this. This watch seems a lot harder to put together than it should be. And that drives this pivot here, and that drives this, and that drives this, and that drives this. So that's all in place. And now I'm going to just lower the bridges. I'll put the, the mainspring bridge on first, so all this is sort of encapsulated nicely. Um, which one is that? Let me think here. So that's this one here. So this will go right over the mainspring, like this. I don't think I've forgotten anything, have I? Actually, actually, was there anything I've forgotten? 
Put that on the other side. The screws on that. No problem. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I'm going to sneaky peeky put a little tiny bit of oil right in this hole right here. That's where the end of the stem is. And that's going to be perfect in there. So then I'm going to put this on top here. So I think the majority of the hard work should be over soon. Just like that. That's over the barrel. And I think that's down. Let me look at the, all the edges here and see if that's down. No, it's not down. I'm pulling this up a bit again just to see what I'm looking at here. No, it just goes straight down. I think I just think the uh, I just think the barrel's probably not in the way or something like that. Because yeah, look down now. That's not down on the other side, but but just push that like that, and that'll square that off. That is squared off, and I think, as you recall, there were only two screws on that one, and there was a third screw was missing, as you recall. So I think this screw here was one of them. Uh, I picked the right screwdriver up here. I actually think I'm getting tired right now, but I've done most of the hard work, so. The hard hauling, as they say. It's already 3 o'clock. It's 3.18, so I've been at this. Well, I started again a little late, so I started around almost 2 o'clock before I got back at it. So I think I'll put this screw over here, see if this works over here. Instead of there, and I'll find the third screw after. I'll go screw hunting and find a third screw. go. You can hear the garage door opening which my wife is going out to pick something up probably. Probably. All right so that's that and then I'm going to lower all of this. These are nice jewels man. They're in good condition which I'm very pleased with. So I just lower this down here and just try to line it up as much as possible before I lower it so it's not, as, it's not out as much as it needs to be so there we go let's lower that and this baby seems like it's tight or something right now I gotta tweak the holes I gotta tweak this thing to get the all this crap lined up properly. This is the hard part, so I'm gonna get my little tweaking tool out. I put a little bit of pressure on the top of my finger and then I'm gonna tweak the gears to get them to ride in place, but I'm not gonna record that. Alright, I tweaked it. Now I gotta grab these three screws and get them over here and one of them is shorter than the other I'm just assuming that the shorter one goes on the very end of that plate so I gotta I want to get these screws in place here well I think I have all of the pivots through but uh, I'll triple check the pivots again like I said before triple check the pivots and then check them again the fourth time just to make sure because that can ruin your day in five seconds if those pivots break and you got to go find another wheel, which is the watchmaker's mistake in that case, right? Not the, not the users, the watchmakers. So, take, take your medicine, man. So I got everything in there now. Now I'm gonna just move the wheel a bit to see if everything's free, and it is. And I'm gonna put a pair of really close glasses on just to make sure I got everything in tight but I'll put the third screw in first and I'm almost there folks almost there just have a little bit of balance work to do and that'll be it so I'll put this one in here everything's still moving nicely 
I'm going to get another pair of glasses on that I have that are really close, even closer than this. These, which are like a glasses of three on top of a times five. So these ones here will, these will for sure tell me if the pivot's sticking through. And I just move the wheel a bit and I can see the pivot now. Yeah, it's good. It's fine. Good, it's fine. Have another glass of wine. So that's in. And if I happen to have any problem with the barrel, I'm not too concerned because I can take that out after. So let me just tighten that down. Tighten this one down. Now what I do is I put a little bit of pressure on the wheel here. And then I'm going to tap the... Uh, the escapement or tap the back of the pallet fork to see if that's going to move properly, right? So just put a little bit of pressure on that wheel here. I think it's this way. really a speedy Gonzales so I'm just wondering whether well, that's good there it's nice and loose all these wheels are loose so it should be fine yep looking at all this to make sure it's in place fine so it should be fine I just like to see a little bit more action on that fork when I'm putting pressure on the wheel here, but I also don't want to break the wheel, so. Yeah, it's a bit better. I'm also putting pressure against the mainspring on the bottom by doing that, so it's probably not wanting to turn so let's get the ratchet wheel in here. Uh, it just fits in like this. And then as you saw before, the screw actually goes on backwards. So it's a wonderful thing. So I'll just clean the face off that ratchet wheel in a second. But that screw goes on in a backwards direction. Yeah, anyway. And the teeth for the ratchet are on the other side, so... It should tighten up this way. Correct? Put it loose in the other way. Let me look at the screws here, because maybe I screwed up one of the screws here and put the, put the ratchet screw where the other one should be. Didn't think so, though. Just looking at the threads in that screw to see which way they go. No, well, if you turn that screw... Actually, if you turn the screw clockwise, or tightens, it tightens. That doesn't make any sense. Maybe I did screw up these two screws. I didn't think so. Let me try it this way. Try this one here. See if that's the other way. I didn't think they got messed up. But maybe they did. Yeah, they did. Look at that. Eh? <laughs> How the hell could I have done that? That's when you put the screws into the basket. 
and stuff happens. So anyway, I matched them up wrong, but I've solved the problem quickly, so we're good. And just move that out of the way. And this just falls in place like that. Put that in like this. Now this one should go clockwise. Now you see what I did there is the minute I found out I was doing something wrong, I didn't force it. You gotta back off and say okay. And I looked at the threads and the threads looked like they were tight righty tighty, so I was like, okay, that's not right. Now that should be able to line the watch a bit here with the screw here. Now, I want to see if this thing moves at all. It's moving, but it's not snapping. I'm concerned that it's not snapping. That's what I'm concerned about. So something here is causing this to not snap. What is that? I know this seemed like it was really tight in the jewel, but I didn't think it was that bad. That seems like it moves fine. I'm just trying to figure out why the pallet fork... The pallet fork should just snap. Snap into place. I'm going to go check and see why that's not snapping. All right, I think we're good there. I'm not getting an incredible snap on that uh, pallet fork, but maybe when I uh, put the um, watch, the escapement back in, it'll snap a little bit better. I might try that up just be, even before I clean it, just to see if I've got some some stuff here happening. All right, just to see if I got some stuff happening. So let me see if I can just throw this in. Uh, pallet forks on this side, so I gotta go in this way. Like that, and then go around like this, and then drop this down right here. And then see if this is even ticking for me. It is having a hard time, though, I gotta admit. I may end up having to run the escapement, which I really don't want to do, but I may have to do it. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on the top of the uh, center wheel, too, because I don't know I'm sure what's causing it to get bogged up. But. might be the center wheel, but it didn't it look fine. It didn't look like there was an issue there at all. Because that's not snapping back and forth. It's kind of stalling, right? No, it wasn't working when I got it. I'm not sure what's around here, so... I could just let it keep running like this and see if it clears itself up. It doesn't make any sense, though, at all. I still have to clean the balance and stuff, but this is a, a pallet fork to just snap right into place. I'm going to try something here. I'm just going to loosen these screws up back here, see if that helps at all. Is there a problem here somehow? So loosen this screw up, loosen this one up. Because these wheels look like they move freely without a problem. And then loosen this one up. There we go. Now, does that make anything any better? I don't think so. I am not sure what this is. It might be the stones, maybe the pallet fork stones. I'm not sure. If I run the wheel freely, is that going to help here? It doesn't seem to want to, just does not seem to want to, uh, it's not over banking, it's just not pushing it well. I just have the wheel just sitting in there, but yeah, taking, loosening these screws didn't help one bit. 
So I'm just going to tighten these up again. Maybe it's the rear screw here or something. I don't know. I think when Buddy Boy took this watch apart, I'm going to take this screw off. I'm being very brave here, but I'm going to take this screw off here and then put it over, over on the other side here. Put it right here. Because there was no screw on that side for some reason. And I don't know what the reason was. You don't know whether the previous owner of the watch just frigged up and uh, bent something. So I didn't see it. I didn't think anyone, anything was bent. Everything looks kind of kosher. What's weird is that this, uh, if I help it along here, Still doesn't want to just go for it, right? So I'm helping it along here a bit. It's taken away. I know the camera angle is shitty right now, but Why do I think it's that center jewel? Okay, I'm just pressing that, putting a little bit of pressure on that wheel. See if I can just free this thing up a bit. It's ticking nicely now. Uh, the power from the mainspring is either not going through nicely or something, right? Because it's just not... I'm just going to hold it here for a little while and put a little bit of pressure on the center wheel here and see if it makes a difference. So, ticking nicely like this. Let's do I know when I put that center wheel in, it felt a bit gummy. So I may have to take all this off and then check that center jewel. But I'll do that after. So that's good enough for now. Um, it's ticking, which is nice, but not really well. So still having problems. Ticking a little bit better right now, actually. But Maybe the jewel, the center jewel is like loose or something. I don't think it, it wasn't cracked. I will check that again though. Time to get out the old microscope. Looks fine, man. It looks fine. That jewel is sticking out too, way too far. Let me see on the other side here. Let me turn this around here. See if this is perhaps supposed to go a bit further, maybe. I don't think so. And it's ticking now. Not ticking well, but it's ticking. Before it wasn't ticking at all, so. I'm going to put a little bore oil in the center jewel and then that's it for now. And uh, we'll just see if I can get this thing working a little bit better. Maybe I just leave it tick like that overnight. That's it. I'm making this video and I'm running away. Alright, I let it keep running and now it's starting to get some strength. So I do think it was friction on that center jewel. So and. I uh, didn't peg it out, so I probably should have pegged it out, but I did put it through the wash machine, and I thought it was fine. Maybe it had some goo on it or something, but now the watch is running a bit stronger. Um, quite a bit stronger, actually. So I'm getting... I'm very pleased with it right now. Um, but I don't think I will 
do much more on this. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll clean the capsule and the balance and stuff and put that back. But yeah, it is running a lot smoother now. So yeah, I think it was compression on the center jewel. So let me see if I, did I tighten this up here? Nope, it's not tight yet. So let me just tighten that up. There we go. That's nice and tight there. And now it's running with a pretty good tick on it. I don't think this a uh, high uh, I don't think the amplitude is super high right now, but it's not too bad. It's a uh, we hit a slow mo on here and see what this looks like and then I'll show you. Was it three? Yeah, so it's going but not like it should be. Yeah, so it's yeah, so it's spinning right now, but not like it should be. So I'll, uh, I think I'll just let this thing run. Uh, but take the cap jewel off or just let it run? What do you think I should do? I think I'll just let it run. And, uh, and then I'll, uh, oh my God, I'm pretty anal. So I'm going to have to take that cap jewel off. Clean that up and then let it run. All right. Otherwise... I'm a bad boy. See how magnetic this thing is, dude. See how magnetic it is. You know what? It doesn't look like it's magnetic at all. Oh, it's got a little bit going on. See that little movement there? That's a little tiny bit of magnetism on the hairspring. But it's speeding up nicely, though. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Liking what I'm seeing, Jerry. Yeah, now I'm getting good amplitude on it. Even better amplitude as the oil sinks in to the center jewel, I think. So I will. Should I continue here or what? I'm going to measure this again. I'm going to take another slow mo video on the amplitude and see what this looks like. This is the world's most boring video for you guys. see what this looks like one oh yeah we almost have 360 degrees on it now so it's starting to start starting to push nicely and yeah there that's all the way over and that's almost 360 which is good so I'm a bad boy Jerry so what I'm gonna do is take the amplitude off this watch I know I'm asking for it but take the amplitude off this watch and then I'm going to work on the balance and get right back. Which side's the pallet fork on? It's this side. I want it to be on the other side. Thank you, Margaret. I'm going to bring it in from this way. Underneath like that. And then turn that around. And with any luck, I'm going to have the thing is going to start ticking for me. Good. I got the hairspring on the wrong side of the wheel here. Fun. Well, there's fun in the water, but there's danger, too. So I got some ticking going on here. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I, uh, I forgot. I took the screw. I took tension off the, uh, off the mainspring. I shouldn't have done that from putting it back in like this. So let me just put the screw in here and then play with that in a second. I'll get it ticking before I tighten the screw down because I don't want to break all my own rules. Uh, let's see. And then just put a little bit of tension on the mainspring here. Line this up a bit.
All right, what's going on here? I'm having fun. I shouldn't have taken it apart. Oh yeah, the mainspring, this is crooked. This is crooked. Just to fall in place and then I need to tighten it. going on here there we go my pivot was wrong tighten that up I'm actually getting pretty good amplitude on that now but I didn't like when I was trying to wind it what kind of grinding I was getting so let me have a look at this other side here and see what's going on when I try to wind this it would be trying to turn the crown over here so it shouldn't be an issue so it's something forked up with the ground. The hell's going on? Everything was fine. Until someone lost an eye. Now if I take this out, is it going to cause an issue here? The answer is no. Oh my god. Oh my god. Righty tighty, don't touch Lucy. Right? Let me see if I just pop this up and have a look inside. Well, it should be fine. And I push the, uh, the mainspring winder in like this. It should be fine. Yeah, there it is there. So let's just put a little bit of oil on all this stuff to make sure I don't have another problem, right? I'm just going to oil this up here. And then I'm going to throw some oil on the bottom here just to make sure I've got enough oil on here too but this catches nicely and then I believe this has to go on maybe this goes on first and then the other thing goes on what do you think what do you think I thought this just goes on the top. Maybe it goes on here first. And then this wheel goes on after. What do you think of that? I might have had it backwards. So, like this, and then like this, maybe? Is that the right way? It seems to be a bit high. Yeah, that's not the right way. This goes on down low. Yeah, that's the right way there. It sinks in low on this, right? And then this goes on like this. 
like so. Like that. And then the screw goes on. I'm talking a lot, I apologize. It's gonna be a long video. I put it up overnight and you guys are gonna go, holy shit, JD, why don't you give up on this watch? Because I'm persistent, I think, or whatever the word is. Now, let me see if this actually turns now. There we go. Done. Fixed. I'm getting a pretty good tick out of that thing, too. Eh? Let me have another look at the video. See what we got for an amplitude. And I'm going to test this on my watchmaker's testing device in a few seconds. Let me see what my amplitude is. Slow mo. I really wanted to take that upper cap jewel out though, but I didn't want to break everything, so. Alright, what do we got now? Holy crap. That's over 365 degrees now. So it's it's smoking, baby. It's smoking. It's doing a good job now. So we're uh, we're a lot better than we were before. Tons better. So now I'm gonna just finish this off and reassemble it because I got her going and I want to make sure that I finish the job. So that was perfect, man. Perfect. So that was a stubborn. I think it was the center jewel that was causing the issue, right? So I want to be able to, I want to F that up. So I'll put this down so it's not touching anything, right? See, so you get that out of the way. I'm not sure how to cr put this in my Myers movement holder here. If I put it like this, I'm probably going to screw something up. It stopped. <laughs> All right, maybe lay it down on my pad. I'll be back in a second. All right, I laid it down on my pad so I can basically put the cannon pinion back on here now. You gotta line up the uh, cannon pinion so that the, the leaves are lined up properly. And I like to push it down in some instances without with using a bound staff right over the top. I'm not sure if this is big enough, but basically stop the watch for a second. I don't know. It seems like it's going to be a pain in the ass. Cannon pinion is causing me problems here. And I'm not sure why, because it went off, came off nicely. And now it won't come off again. So let me just pull this up again and have another look at it. Because I think that it is becoming a troublesome cannon pinion. To stop the watch by putting on the cannon pinion, it doesn't make any sense at all. But I'm trying to look at this, uh, the movement here to see if there's an issue with the uh, with the top of this. 
I think I can... I had a small piece of paper that I can use to probably fix that. I'm going to take a small piece of 600 grit sandpaper and I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut a long a long line of that. And then I'm going to try very carefully sand the cannon pinion from both sides or from the center wheel post from both sides normally wouldn't do anything like this but this cannon pinion does not seem to be want to be um, it doesn't seem to want to go on so I can't see any other way of doing this so I'm just gonna take this like this and just might make a little bit of a mess um, Maybe if I can poke some watch paper down there, it won't be as bad. So I can take a little tiny piece of watch paper again and cut that into a slice, right? Like so. Because I don't want any metal from the cannon pinion getting through there. So take that like that and then push that on. This is all trial and error, folks. Trial and error. Get this back on somehow. There we go. So that's protecting that a bit. So let me see if I can somehow sand this thing. I may just cup it and then turn the watch. Might be the easiest way to do it. Cup it like this, and then squeeze it, and then turn the watch. See what craziness I'm up to right now. I just want to take some of the corrosion off the cannon pinion, the uh, center wheel. I think it cleaned it, no problem, but I think maybe there's some leftover corrosion on there because that. Cannon pinion is hard to put back on, and you don't want to put oil on it, so because that won't work. It won't work then. So there we go. Now I'll dip that. See, the watch is working nicely. Eh? Look at that. Now I'll dip that in uh, Rodico just to make sure I get all the leftovers out of there, like that. And then I think I mean I think that little bugger of a cannon pin is a pain in the arse here. No. All right, let's see if I can slide this on now. It's gonna make any difference. Oh my god, that's on hard. Uh, see, I had a stake in here. I just don't want to pound that through. I need to support it from the other side or I'm going to have bigger trouble. it's in it's in and it's still ticking thank God now the question is when I turn the uh, I put this in is this gonna turn Cause that was friggin hard to get in yeah there we go it's setting the time yeah that's good. And let me see if I still have amplitude here. So what I was afraid of here when you do something like that, 
I need to support the pivot on the other or the the, the um, shaft on the other side because if you don't support the shaft on the other side there's a chance that uh, you can bend the bridge which you don't want to do. I did that a long time ago on a British watch and I pissed myself off doing that because I knew I shouldn't have done it. So let me just look and everything else it seems to be kosher. So that's good. And I use this stake to uh, put that cannon pinion back on because I had to put quite a lot of pressure to get that thing down into position. This old watch is pain in the arse. Pain in the arse, I'm telling you. And this goes right in right here. It should just slide right in, no problem. There we go. And the dial washer. Uh, enough bend in that. I'll just put a little, a little bit more of a bend in the dial washer. They're so small that they don't really matter anyway. Doesn't matter if you bend it a bit more because it's it's not going to cause the watch to stop or anything. Now the face, la face. So I think I will put it on and clean it up. Now the second hand is there. The second hand is look again and find that second hand. Good old Eaton's. Is there anything else I need to deal with here? No, I don't think so. So that should drop right in, except I gotta have to. I think the screws need to be loosened again. I can't remember whether I tightened them back up. Do you guys remember? Keep my fingers away from the balance. Yeah, there was only two screws, and I don't believe I tightened them back up again. So it should just go straight in without a problem. With PUD problem. Or PUD. There we go. It's in there. Now let's tighten the screw up here. Turn that around very carefully. Try to keep my fingers away from the balance. And tighten this screw up. This is going to be a boring video, guys. So, my wife ain't watching it. Hopefully, you are. Because this has been a challenge and a half. A challenge and a half. I don't even know if this thing is ticking right yet, but I'll regulate it after. So, so now I'm just going to try to case the darn thing before I put the um, hands back on so I've got some support for it. So, let me see. I'm going to put this down on the movement holder down or movement down on here and make sure I'm good here uh, that's good there this old case they call it this old case looks like somebody tried to change the crown on this a thousand years ago because it's not much of a crown but I ain't paid to change crowns <laughs> I guess if this was a vintage collector's item, I'd be changing the crown on it and doing all kinds of stuff, but it's not. It's an old T. Eaton watch. Eaton. Eaton, I tell you. An old Eaton pocket watch. It's in pretty good condition, though. It's in pretty good condition for an old pocket watch. An old pocket watch. All right, faces up, things down. Let me see. I don't want to put this in like this, right? So get my eyepiece out of the way because I can't see in 3D. All right, there we go. There we go. Nothing there. Where is the mechanism? There it is. So, all right, I should just be able to shove that in like that. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that the uh, yeah, so it's in the setting, the uh, setting position, which is outward, right? And then just line up the, uh, this here. I can use my fingers because I'm going to clean that up after anyway. So there we go. Now, screw, if you recall, the crazy screw was in the back, so I'll put the other one in first. 
I think my wife wanted me to learn Crazy Train or something. Or maybe it was me who wanted to learn it. <laughs> One of us wanted to learn it. One of us wanted to learn it. I think I'll just let it rest it down here. Like so. Put that in. Either my eyes are getting worse or these glasses are not working like they used to. Because uh, there are times threes, but it feels like everything is still f far away or fuzzy or something. It makes no sense at all. So I just check and see if it's flat through the movement in the case, and it is. And then I can tighten these down a bit. I'll tighten this one first because it's going to raise it up a bit. And then uh, I'll get the other one after. Yeah, that's not bad. And that'll wind. I wound it all the way up, so I'm not too concerned here. I'm just going to try to pull this out here. There we go. That's the best way to do it, by the way. You grab the watch like this with one hand, you reach over the top, and then use the movement to pull it out while you hold the stem. So that's the best way to do it. And I'm going to put this in. Remember how I shine that up nicely? So I'm going to put that in for now. Because I'm likely just to run this overnight and then check, the, check how, how it's doing. So now I'm going to clean up the face a bit uh, with a, some Rodico. And just, I think my wife said we're going to have turkey legs for dinner tonight. I was like, oh my god, turkey legs, turkey legs. Holy crapoli. That sounds so good. Sounds so marvelous. Marvelous. I don't think this is going to show through the crystal, so I'm going to have a look at it after, but... Just keep my Rodico out of the pipe hole. The old pipe hole. Well, I got her running, so I think Wayne over there in Winnipeg will be pretty pleased that I got this thing going, right? He better be. Or there's going to be some... See, I use that sandpaper on the... Uh, just around the... the basically put some sandpaper on the on the watch just to make sure it was uh gonna just on the balance the uh cannon pinion what am i doing here i get my hand thing here yeah i think this should be pretty easy to put down toothpick i don't want to leave marks I'm going to put it down and look at it from the side as I do this. I think that's pretty good. And it's still ticking, which is nice. Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Alright, now for the minute hand. Old vintage pocket watch. This old watch. I should have a TV show called This Old Watch, and you guys can watch me fix watches on TV. Now, see how that hour hand is still has moved over this way just a bit. I'm going to accommodate for that, that that movement by moving the minute hand over just a bit. So they're lined up nicely. Just like that. And I'm gonna push that down now. It's pushed down, but I gotta gotta make sure it's not sideways and crap, because it was. Look at it from the the end. Sometimes these babies go sideways on you from the end too.
That's nice there, actually. I can see this little tiny piece of something now underneath the uh, the hands. I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, I got it. So there we go. Now when I turn the hands, 12 o'clock should be pretty 12 o'clock-ish. Yeah, that's pretty good there. 12 o'clock high, and then if I move that around, that's pretty good. I gotta make sure that it clears the second hand though. That's the trick. So I grabbed the second hand here, the pipe. I think I showed you this trick earlier today when I made a video, but I just rest it like that and then tip it over like this. Like I said, you rest it like that and tip it over and just press it down at the back of your like that. Now I look at it on the side to see if this is going to be a problem. Hang on, I think I got to press it down a bit more. Alright, that's pretty good there. Now when I clear this, is it going to clear the uh, second hand? I'm going to go through and, yep, no problem at all. And if you look at the three hands at an angle, I'll just show these to you at an angle. There you see the three hands all clearing each other, which is what you want. And if I look at the hands from the back, they're pretty much aligned, they're not tilted on the back. So that's what it looks like from the back. And um, so that's, that's all good, man. And now it's, I'm going to set the time on it. It is 4.27 right now. So I'm going to go all around the clock here, all around the circle. And it seems the setting mechanism seems to be running smoothly. So 4.27 would be here, 4.27 and some change. Push this down like that. And then I'm going to put the crystal back on. The old crystal. And let me look at this crystal here. It's got a little bit of guck on it, so I'm going to remove that guck. Because I hate guck. I'm a guck hater. I usually use my fingernail to remove that, which is, I'm not sure if this fingernail is an official watchmaker's tool. But I use it anyway. Now I'm looking for a cloth that I can wipe the inside of this with. And I got a lot of dirty ones, though. I got no clean ones. Um, let me see. I need a cloth. I'll just use this here. And when you're cleaning the inside of the crystal, don't hold the edges and push down because you're just going to pop the crystal out. So then you'll be pissed off that you pop the crystal out. Yeah, this crystal probably needs some work too, because it looks kind of smudgy. It looks kind of old. The old crystal. It just scratches on the outside on the other side, so I might be able to just use some special cream to get rid of those scratches. Um, and we're going to put it on the watch first, because I don't want to... I can do that while it's on the watch, actually. Let me just put this crystal back on nice and carefully. And what you do, you don't want to thread it, cross thread it, so you just want to... Somebody said it's not called cross threading or something. They had another name for it. But putting the crystal on can be tricky. Because it doesn't always want to go on. Especially on some of these old pocket watches. Again, you just got to use patience. And if it's not screwing on, then don't continue. Well, I think I got myself some action here. And I think this thing was tight to go on when it got to a certain point, and then it loosens up again. Like that. I think that's what happened last time. Yeah, there we go. And it loosens up, which is kind of weird, but it's the threading of the thing, right? So, so there we go. So that's running now. And... I'm going to throw that into the old timing machine and see what it says. What do you think? 
What do you think it'll say? Let's set that up for a second. So that's a nice swing on the bounce. All right, that's it. That's the video. All I can say is, what a job. Oh my God, what a job. Hopefully you made it to this part of the video because it's a really long one. I apologize. I'd normally clip it. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll edit it down a bit. But uh, but uh, the watch is running super strong, as you can see. Like super strong. Its amplitude was 344. Shut up. 344. That's an incredible amplitude. Um, so I got this thing going really well. Anyway, that's the job. That's what you want to do. Um, and uh, thanks for watching my video, and I'll catch you next time. And again, if you want to get a hold of me, jdwatchservice at gmail.com. Thanks a lot, and catch you on the flip-flop.